to HyperRx or not to HyperRx or HYPR slash RX? This is the question we're going to be answering today. We're going to start off by explaining exactly what it is because if you don't use AMD Adrenaline, it can be extremely confusing. In a nutshell, HyperRx is a tuning program that lives inside of AMD's Adrenaline software. It is only one layer inside of the Adrenaline software, so we're going to be focusing on certain modules inside of HyperRx today. The different levels that live inside of HyperRx are many things like AFMF or AMD Fluid Motion Frames, Fidelity Super Resolution or Super Resolution, Anti-Lag and a lot more. We're going to be focusing on two aspects today which is AFMF or AMD Fluid Motion Frames as well as Super Resolution. I always feel it's best to illustrate how these programs work by actually using it. So we're going to switch now to recording that I did where I look at the Adrenaline software overall and then we'll go into the individual elements. So this is the Adrenaline landing page and you can see we're on the Home tab and you'll see a couple of sections in front of you. The first is the Global Experience in which you can change the global experience of how you interact with Adrenaline. We're not going to go through everything today but just to show you a quick snapshot making sure that your drivers and software are completely up to date. This is in home. Then we go into gaming, which we're going to come back to now. We can see a list of games. You can automatically search to see if there are any other games on your system. You can also manually find them if you can't find them here. We've got our graphics settings. We've got our display settings and we got our advisors. We also have the ability to record and stream and set the different settings in which we record and stream. So we have record here. We've got live stream, scene editor, different media that you have captured, as well as the settings for how you're going to capture or live stream. Then we have got performance, which is monitoring real time what's going on with the GPU one, GPU two, as well as CPU. Obviously, when they're all AMD, it just makes it a lot easier. And then we got tracking over here where we can start logging and it will start logging the different metrics that you want. You can choose the metrics profile from basic, intermediate, advanced and custom. I'm just going with the basic here and you can start logging and that'll start capturing everything. Then if we go into the actual overlay, we can enable the overlay and you'll see here at the top right, it'll say FPS, frame time, the 99th percentile, as well as a whole bunch of other metrics that you can track and this will be available to you during game. We also have the ability to go in to tuning or to overclocks. Again, this is not something that we're gonna go through today. And then lastly, smart technology, which we're not gonna go through today, but this is things like noise suppression and so on. Now, where we are gonna focus today is in gaming and graphics. Now there's two things that AMD have updated and the one is Radeon Super Resolution or RSR or ASR AMD Super Resolution or FSR Fidelity Super Resolution. They have different naming conventions. And the second one is Fluid Motion Frames. Now, the difference between these two is AMD Super Resolution is an upscaling feature which takes the resolution of the game, the resolution at which you're playing at, and upscales it to the maximum resolution of your screen. Now, I don't know how to actually get your screen to go backwards to say, actually, I've got a 1440 because I was on 4K and it would always upscale to 4K. And that's something that I'm still trying to work out. So let's actually test this and play some games. OK, now, if we go into options, what we want to do is we want to change our resolution physically on the video down to the resolution of a 1440 resolution. We want to keep everything the same. The refresh rate you can up and down. This is completely dependent on your monitor, but obviously you want it at the highest refresh rate and then we want to apply the changes. Okay, now we can see we're in 1440 in full screen at 144 Hertz. Now, if we go into a game, let's go back into the actual game. Now we can see we're walking on a trail here and the frames will be set at 144. They will go up and down, but it's basically because I've forced the resolution across display. Again, ignore the frames per second. That's not what we're looking at now. So this is 1440p gameplay. Now what we can do by pushing Alt and R and then enabling Radeon Super Resolution and pushing Alt and R again, we have the ability now to actually forcibly upscale this to 4K. However, for this to take effect, we do have to restart the game. Now your frame rates might be a little lower and this is because it's actually using drivers and resources to physically upscale it from 1440 to 2160 but not a full upscale. It's an artificial upscale, which improves your frames at 4K. Now, what I'm going to put in front of you now is the Frontiers of Pandora in true 4K and now the Mr. Pandora at upscale 4K.
Now there is a difference between the two. It is an artificial upscale, but it's not too bad in my opinion. And it does a really good job of upscaling the graphics so that you have a better gaming experience without having to sacrifice too much resources in order to get that better gaming performance. But what does this look like in reality? So what this means in reality is if we look at the graph in front of us, the left is avatar in 2K and the right is avatar 2K, but 4K upscale. Now, blue is our average frames per second. Red is our 99th percentile and yellow or mustard is our 95th percentile. So we can see there's not too much of a performance miss when actually physically upscaling it to 4K. Hence, I was actually really impressed with this feature by AMD, where you're actually getting a better gaming experience, a 4K-ish. Again, it's it's a little bit of a dilute, but a 4K-ish game scale, but actually gaming with the frames that you would get in a 2K or 1440p environment. The next thing we have here is fluid motion frames. But before I do that, I just wanna show you, if you look at the top right, we have got frames of 95, 95. So the one on the left in orange is coming from RTSS and the one on the right is coming from AMD itself from Adrenaline Software. Now the issue here is that as soon as we push Alt and R and we enable fluid motion frames, you will see that the AMD software disappears. So what I wanted to try and do was I first did a test on fluid motion frames to try to see what the results would be and they look as follows. So I went about it in the completely wrong way because what we have here is I took one test until I realized that it just doesn't work was the Avatar Frontiers of Pandora from 1K, 1K FMF or AFMF, which is fluid motion frames, all the way up to 2K, 4K, and then 4K upscale from 2K in order to actually see what the difference was. But we can see a trend here that in normal 1K, the results are actually higher than in fluid motion frames. Same thing with 2K to fluid motion frames and 4K to fluid motion frames. And the reason for this is because AMD actually uses resources to use fluid motion frames. So that's why the actual performance according to how I captured went down. Now in reality, this is the reality but it's not. This is because fluid motion frames uses a different mechanism in order to generate frames. Now, if we go back to the game, we can see that the AMD report on FPS has actually disappeared. So what I had to do is I physically captured this with my camera to actually show, okay, it's reporting 90, but on the other side, it's reporting 144 for AMD. And I think they turned this off for a reason to avoid confusion to basically say, these aren't the frames you're looking for. So what happens with this is it basically takes artificial frames and inserts it into the game. Now this works when you're having a very fluid motion. So if you're walking forward, you'll see that the frames are high from AMD side, but low from the actual Windows capturing side. But as soon as we start to do 360s, the frames per second start to balance out at 60. And this is because this turns off AFMF because it literally can't keep up with the frames it's trying to insert with all the fast motions. So this is where you've got to be a little bit speculative in which games you want to apply AFMF to because it's not going to work for competitive gaming. It will work for slower games or more tactical games where you're not going to be rushing around first person shooters and so on, where you need that extra frame generation because it's an artificial experience that comes from the drivers of the actual graphics card rather than using the in-game frames and enhancing in-game frames. Now there is a trick to using a FMF and I say this very loosely correctly, and that is to limit the frames that the game is generating. Now, this is also the frames that you'd see reported on RTSS or present one and so on and so forth. But what we want to do is we want to limit those frames to half the refresh rate of your monitor. Now, this is because basically where the artificial frames come from, don't come from the game as mentioned before, they are generated by the GPU. So how we would do this is we would go to something like RTSS or in-game and say, we want to limit the frames to 79 because I'm on a 144. Well, actually half of 144 would be 
72. So you can play around in a variable of 70 to 79, 80, just depending on what's going to look better. Because if you're putting it too high, you're going to start to see tears or things that look like artifacting. Now, how we do this is we go to RTSS. Let's just limit it to 70 to see how the game actually overrides the software. And you can see there it's limited to 70 on the top there, but let's apply it and escape. Now we can see that it's been limited to 70. But as soon as we turn on AFMF, we see through the camera that the FPS is actually higher, even though we've reduced it. And this is because it's starting to fill gaps in the frames that the graphics card is actually producing to give you a smoother experience. Now, depending on the game, this can be an absolutely amazing experience or it can be a horrific experience. It's just something that you have to play with for now. So in summary, AFR or AMD Fidelity Resolution is an artificial upscaling of your game. In that, if you've got a 4K monitor and you put your output to 1080 or 1440, it's going to artificially increase the render resolution of your game to a render 4K. It's not a true 4K, but it's a good experience that uses less resources from your graphics card and your G well, GPU, CPU, in order to give you a better experience. It's something that I highly recommend you playing around with. It's not perfect yet, but it's a really good concept. So in summary, HyperRx is really innovative and something really cool that you wanna play around with if you do have an AMD graphics card. In particular, I enjoyed Fidelity Super Resolution or FSR because I felt that it was something that you could immediately implement that wasn't going to have a negative effect because all it is is an artificial upscale Whereas AFMF is something that I feel is going to need more time to be feasible and to actually have a good impact in games. Yes, it can have a good impact in some games immediately, but in order to have an impact on first person shooters and to actually have a real world impact where you're going to be able to enjoy more frames, that's going to need a little bit more time and development. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, please feel free to shoot them in the comment section below because there is a lot to the Radeon software, which I'm sure I'm going to be covering in videos to come. Cheers, guys. Goodbye.